as Kate so eloquently put just a few minutes ago, 2023 has been a year. Anybody had a year? Let's show of hands. How many of you are ready for 2024? Yeah, let's do this. There's a passage in the Bible that I came across that I believe everyone in this room today needs to hear. And I really believe that whether you've been in the worst season of your life or you've been in the best season of your life, God wants to do something in your life, amen? And he wants to do it in 2024, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna read this scripture to you in Isaiah 43. The scripture says this, but forget all that. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I'm about to, say it with me, do something new. Say it again with me. Do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I'll make a pathway through the wilderness. Yes, I'll make the rivers and the dry wastelands so my chosen people, the people of TE Church, can be refreshed. See, what God is saying here is that you need to stop looking back to where you've been and you need to start looking forward to where you're going because there are things that happened in 2023 that you just want to turn your back on, but sometimes they want to revisit you. And God's saying in this, I want to do a new thing in your life. And I think that's for everyone here, if you're within the sound of my voice, that he wants to do something new inside of you. And if we're being honest in our lives today, there are also some things we need to stop doing, <laughs> and there's some things we need to start doing. So I kind of compiled a short little list. PT and I are going to preach a couple little messages today to you, but this is where my heart was today, that there are some things that we need to make a decision to do in our 2024 that involves us stopping something and starting something. So let's just get right into it. In 2024, make the decision that this year is the year you will, number one, stop doing the things you know are wrong for you and start living the life Jesus has for you. See, I don't have to tell you what you're doing wrong in your life. No one has to tell me what I'm doing wrong in my life because I know. And so if we would really look at that and we would say no to the wrong things and, and we would say yes to the right things, I'm telling you 2024 will look different. It'll look so much different for you. And so it means to stop hanging with the wrong crowd. You know who they are. And start hanging with the people so you can show them how Jesus is working in and through you. See, it's not just about getting rid of them. It's about showing them what Jesus is doing in your life. Stop living below your standards. You have to have boundaries and standards in place this year that say, I'm not stepping out of this boundary for anyone, for anything, for any reason, any way, shape, or form. This is what my 2024 will look like. It didn't look like that in 2023, but I'm gonna set the boundaries of my life that are good for me, amen? The second thing is this. In 2024, make the decision that this year is the year that you will stop turning to your cell phone and start opening your Bible. I love my cell phone. I love my cell phone. But I don't want my identity to come from my cell phone. I don't want my identity to come from the people who like my posts or the people who criticize my posts. I don't want my happiness to come from that place. And I hope that you're feeling the same thing right now because we can get consumed with it. I'm at the top of the list. So we have to be careful to stop getting gratification from other people and start getting our transformation from God. And the way that that happens is, Gratification comes from this phone that we look at that we really think is real people that really like us, that are really our friends. When I'm telling you there's only one that's really your friend, and that's God who lives in, in, in heaven above who wants to speak to you through his word. And the only way that can happen is maybe to put that cell phone down and start to pick up that Bible like old school and start to read it and start to be transformed by it. See, people will let you down They'll say things you want to hear, but they'll also say things that you don't want to hear. But the one thing that God will do, if you take five minutes today, every single day, and you read that Bible, I promise you, God will also tell you the things that you don't want to hear about your life, and he's going to tell you the things that you do want to hear, and that is the truth. Amen? Okay. The next one is this. In 2024, make the decision that this year is the year you will stop praying in doubt and start praying in faith. There's something about praying in faith and in confidence. When we pray in doubt, it's a prayer like this, God, I think you can do it, 
God, I, I think this is my, what, what happened. This might be what happens in my marriage and maybe in my friendship. No, that's not the prayer that we need to be praying, the faith that we have. See, the Bible says this, come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. When you're in a time of need, do you want someone praying for you that is filled with boldness and confidence or someone who just might think it might happen? That's the way we have to think about our own lives. Don't pray thinking that God can't do it because he can do all things, amen? Don't pray thinking God is not willing to do it because if it's in his will, he will make a way for it to happen. Don't let others help you to doubt your faith in your prayers. They might look at you and say, you're nuts. You're crazy for believing that. But you say, you know what? I know what my God can do. I know how he can move through situations that no one else can. So I'm going to stand confident and I'm going to stand bold. And I'm going to pray in faith and not pray in doubt, amen? The next one is this, in 2024, make the decision that this year is the year you will. Stop criticizing yourself for what you haven't done and start celebrating how far you've come. How far you've come. All of us can look back in 2023 and see the things that we didn't accomplish. The goals that we set at the beginning of 23 that didn't happen. The things that we said we wouldn't say, but we said anyway. The people that we hurt and we didn't mean to. I mean, we can have a long litany and a long list of things that you can look at to see that you have done so many things and you haven't accomplished a lot of those things. But I believe that God wants us to look and see the celebration in the things that you have accomplished. So maybe you said the hurtful things to that person, but man, you looked to God and you said, God, help me in my time of need because I need to be able to have those words coming out of my mouth that are from you and not from my inner self, amen? Because you're always gonna miss the mark. You're always gonna miss the mark. We call ourselves the perfect place for, impe for imperfect people for a reason because we're not perfect. And we're, if we're trying to achieve perfection, we're never gonna be able to stop celebrating what we've done. We're always gonna criticize what we haven't done, amen? So maybe this year, maybe your celebration will be that you're going to start eating a little bit healthier this year, little by little by little. Or maybe this is the year that you're going to be celebrating because you're going to get along a little bit better with your ex. Somebody, I hear some laughter in the crowd, but it is possible. It is possible. Or maybe your little by little decision that you're going to celebrate is that you're going to come to church more frequently because you wanna know what God's word says about you and you wanna start living and walking this walk. Listen, every step is a step, regardless of the size of the stride, amen? And the last one is this. In 2024, make the decision that this year is the year that you will stop avoiding the purpose God has for you and start surrendering to what God wants to do in you. There's something about surrender there's something about submission. We don't really like those words because when someone tells you to surrender, that means you feel like you're giving up. But see, the surrender to God is different than the surrender to something else. And the surrender to God means that you're allowing him to come into a place internally inside of you where you will change from the inside out. And so many times we wanna avoid those things. We don't really, we hear the call, but we don't really wanna hear it. Because if we hear it, it means we have to do something about it. And sometimes we don't want to do something about it. We just want to sit on our laurels, as the people would say in the 1900s, and just sit there and just kind of hang because it's easier, isn't it? So when we say we're going to surrender to what God wants to do inside of us, we have to say, God, I accept the calling you have on our lives. See, everyone has a calling. Some of them look different. And your calling may be to reach the people that are in your neighborhood. Your calling may be to be the best teacher that there is in the school system because these kids need you. Your calling may be in ministry where God's calling you to be able to do something in the church or in a ministry fashion. I don't know what it looks like to you, for you, but I can tell you this. You have to stop avoiding the call and start surrendering to God and his purpose. And I will tell you this, that he will do things inside of you that you've never thought you were capable of. So as we go into this next song, I just want you to think about those couple of things that we talked about. What will you stop this year? And what will you start this year? Because in that decision, in that decision all year long, it's not just in January, but it's all throughout the year, 
But in that decision, you're going to see something that maybe you haven't seen before. And it's this element of God that we not always recognize. And it's the goodness of God. And in that goodness of God, he shows us things in our surrender and in our love and in our submission that we would never see any other time. Let's make that our goal for 2024. Amen? Amen. Amen.